All right, another review today. Uh, so many cards. A few I had a hand in revealing with the Soul Fragment package with Soul Seologist here, but also crazy new Shaman Legendary and a five-star card on top of that. This is a review for the ages. Hey, buddy, watch this. So up first here, we got this crazy Shaman card. First off, just incredible artwork on this one. It's Instructor Fireheart. A 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary and bow to cry. Discover a spell that costs one or more. If you play it this turn, repeat this effect. So you slam Instructor Fireheart on board. You get three options. You choose Lightning Bolt. And you sling that Lightning Bolt to your opponent's face. And she goes off again. And you get to discover three more cards. And you pick a Lightning Bolt again, let's say. And you slam it face. And theoretically, you could get seven Lightning Bolts all going face, right? For some obscene damage output that's pretty unlikely it's way more likely you discover a range of spells that cost uh slightly more maybe you get you know a far sight maybe you get a serpent shrine portal uh, maybe you have to take a hag of the scheme or an earthquake eventually to finish off the chain but i think if you play this like on a full 10 mana turn there's a decent chance you could get you know two to three spells out of it and some great stuff to do in the meantime via utilizing those spells uh but the cool thing is is you have to make those decisions in the moment it's like do i want to take a cheap spell now even though i really need that earthquake and do i want to try to find an earthquake for later uh or do i take the earthquake now and just give up on the chain for fireheart so you've got these decisions and uh, i think that's really skill rewarding first off but also kind of crazy in how much potential value or shenanigans can be generated out of Instructor Fireheart. Not to mention there's some wackiness with like Quest Shaman doubling this battle cry. I don't know exactly how that works. I'm imagining only the first instance is doubled and then each of the spells you grab probably just give you one additional discover. But there's still ways there to uh, kind of increase the output here of Instructor Fireheart. So I think this card's interesting on turn three. It's like a Volpira Scoundrel in some ways, where you might just be happy to play that 3-3 on board, uh, even better than Volpira in that instance, and discovering a spell's fine. And then you've also got these high mana cost turns where this can go bonkers and generate a ton of stuff. Um, just grabbing you maybe two to three cards would be awesome, turning this one card into that in the meantime. Uh, now, it is a little bit prescribed in that you have to play the cards if you want to get more value. So there might be some turns where this doesn't feel all that good, where you don't want to commit additional stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, I had to grab this spell because it was cheap, but I don't really want to play this right now. It's like, I don't need Feral Spirit Wolves. I don't want to overload, but I wanted to grab that one so that I could grab another spell. So I can't imagine some awkward situations, but nonetheless, I think a card like this just has so much potential output and has so much value that even though those awkward moments will exist, there are still going to be moments where this is like a game winner, great in a control deck that's looking to generate resources, would fit perfectly into a Highlander deck to help you fill in some of those awkward turns. And even in the worst case scenario, the floor for this card is pretty good. I think it's Volpira Scoundrel Plus, and Volpira Scoundrel is a great card in Shaman already. So... I don't think Instructor Firebird has, has much chance to be a bad card, and I think she's occasionally going to have that chance to be a super good card. All right, so we've got a big package of nine cards here all dealing with this. It's a Soul Fragment. This is not a collectible card. This is something you shuffle into your deck with some cards, and then you get a bonus off of it uh, from other cards. We're gonna talk about all these, but it's important you know what a Soul Fragment does. So when you draw this, it's cast when drawn. That means it goes off and then you draw another card afterwards. This doesn't interrupt your draw process at all. And it restores two health to your hero. So as you cycle into these, you get a little bit of life gain. And again, you can redeem them via some cards for bonuses, which we're gonna talk about more. So Soul Fragments is a shared uh, concept between Demon Hunter and Warlock. And there are a handful of dual class cards that shuffle the soul fragments into your deck. Starting off here with the Spirit Jailer. 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 I know how to speak English. It's a one mana, one three with Battle Cry Shuffle. Two soul fragments into your deck. So just a really nice minion here to start things off in a soul fragment style deck. 
Uh, it's a 1-3 stat line. We know how well that works. We've seen the Dire Moles of old work so well uh, with the stat line, just getting a body on board. It's certainly not as aggressive as some of the other options Demon Hunter might like to run, like Battle Fiend, Blazing Battle Mage, but it's still sticky. It does something. And if you're playing a Soul Fragment deck, I think this is absolutely going to be a core way to get things moving and um, just make sure you have an early presence. And, you know, it fits pretty nicely into the aggressive play style of both Warlock and, and Demon Hunter that they have access to. With Tempo Demon Hunter, Zoo Warlock starts, Demon Synergies as well exist. So it's sort of the perfect way to support what Soul Fragments are all about. So next up here is Soul Shear, another dual class uh, for Warlock Demon Hunter. Two mana, deal three damage to a minion, and shuffle two Soul Fragments into your deck. They're all gonna shuffle too, spoiler alert. So you got here just your early game removal tool. It's that Penance style card, the Frost Bolt, the Dark Bolt, of course can't go face, but it's just gonna help you keep up with minions in the early game. And it is a lot like Penance really, because the Soul Fragments represent four total healing off of each shuffle. So you get a little bit of life gain back eventually, sometimes. And uh, you're also just addressing your opponent's early threats. And we know that this three damage two mana breakpoint has worked fine. This is not probably the best version of it we've seen. It's not got the immediacy of Penance. It maybe doesn't have the follow-up of Penance with things like Sethic Veil Weaver, but it's another just really solid starting piece to the Soul Fragment puzzle, and it looks absolutely fine in that regard. So now that we've seen the two dual class shuffle cards, we're gonna move over to the Demon Hunter specific components. And both Demon Hunter and Warlock have their own class specific shuffle card. For Demon Hunter, it's Marrow Slicer, and it's basically True Silver Champion. I mean, straight up, it's a four mana, four two. Uh, it shuffles the Soul Fragments in, which each heal you for two. True Silver heals you for two on each attack. Uh, again, delayed with the Soul Fragments, and they have additional upsides, depending on how you play them. But uh, it's as True Silver Champion as it gets. And you know what? True Silver Champion's still a good card to this day. So Marrow Slicer, I think, will be absolutely fine. Uh, now, Demon Hunter does have access to other weapons. When I initially saw this card and I recorded the reveal video quite a while ago at this stage, Warglaves of Azanoth was wreaking havoc at that stage, and I thought, man, Marrow Slicer's probably not going to fit in well when you have Warglaves. It just feels way better. It's only a mana more. And there was, like, Aldraki Warblades behind it at three mana, and I was like, is this really going to make sense? Uh, but with Warglaves getting nerfed, I think Marrow Slicer could slot in as that mid-range weapon that Demon Hunter's happy to use, and... Although this can hit minions, it can also just go face for eight damage over a couple turns. You've got your hero power to find those nice five damage breakpoints on it. Uh, even more if you got twin slices, etc. So I absolutely think Demon Hunter can use this if they're willing uh, to go for a soul fragment package. This one will fit in really, really nicely. And why would you want to run soul fragments? Well, here's why. The Soul Shard Lapidary, a five mana, five, five minion for Demon Hunter. And Battlecry, if you destroy a Soul Fragment in your deck, which, you know, you've shuffled in a handful already, you're going to give your hero plus five attack this turn. So this is very reminiscent of that, like, Glaivebound Adept style. Now, of course, Glaivebound Adept could go over the top. It could go face uh, around a taunt. It didn't really need anything else. Uh, but with this one, you don't actually have to attack first. So it opens up a little bit of flexibility, and it's actually more damage output than a Glaivebound Adept, which we know has been a really powerful card. I might even argue the stat line's a lot better too with five health, that's a bit harder break point to achieve for a lot of different uh, minion trades, rush minions in particular, faceless corruptors, etc. So I, this just looks like an insanely strong mid game turn. And uh, I think it might be worth running Soul Fragments and Emu Hunter just to get really high pressure outputs to face with a card like this one. And the cool thing is, is like, the Soul Fragments give you a little bit more time through their healing passively to find lethals, to continue maintaining that pressure. Because a lot of times what would happen with Demon Hunter is, is you're like almost there, almost there, and your opponent kills you first, whether that's a mirror match or a hunter that's coming back at you really hard. And um, these both help you go hard, but also buy you time to like squeak out those late lethals with over the top kind of uh, last chance damage outs. Now, of course, when we talk about these redemption cards, there's always a risk that you haven't shuffled your soul fragments yet, that you don't have a soul fragment in deck, or that you drew them too soon. So there's a consistency concern. That said, uh, at five man, I don't think that's much of a concern. You're gonna have a handful of opportunities to have already shuffled in, 
and you're not that likely to have drawn yet either if you're playing this on curve in the mid game just because you haven't drawn that many cards so far you're before things like skull of Gul'dan that might shuffle into or draw into some uh, soul fragments accidentally so essentially this is a really nice uh, break point from a mana cost game state standpoint where it's very likely to have a soul fragment already and that means it's going to be a, a high output card and it just looks really strong so for another demon hunter card here we have the shard shatter mystic cannot tell you how many times i said shart shatter mystic in the uh reveal video for this one it's a three mana three two demon hunter card <laughs> it's battle cry is destroy a soul fragment in your deck to deal three damage to all other minions so this is that dusk breaker aoe style card it helps you flip back a board and uh develop a little bit of a body in the meantime and it only costs three mana where dusk breaker costs four we know dusk breaker was an insane card we know this deal three damage to all has been a very uh substantial uh removal amount throughout hearthstone's history from hellfires to dust breakers to um crazy nether wings even today it's great as well and uh, this seems like one of the most efficient swingiest ways to do it so far so clearly when board states line up this is going to be amazing i think really the only hesitation or challenge for this card is whether or not it's going to be ready by turn three when you might want to play it to help swing against a couple of your opponent's early game minions because you have to put that soul fragment in already you do have a one drop and a two drop that can do it but did you hit them because they're only a small portion of your deck so unlike turn five where you've had a little bit more time you've had that marrow slicer you've had some things to help you get there and more opportunities to draw your soul fragment cards this one doesn't have as much on curve. Now that said, I don't know if you're always playing this on curve. Often you might be happy to play this turn six or seven, just wipe your opponent's stuff, keep going face, and you're fine. And that's why I think this card's still really good. Because if you were always expecting to play this on turn three, probably not so great. Uh, but if you're playing it on turn seven, turn six, turn eight, it's probably going to be completely uh, fine from a, from a uh, consistency standpoint. You'll have your fragment and it's still going to be very powerful at resolving uh, a big swing board state. So, um, does Tempo Demon Hunter, does an aggressive Demon Hunter need an AoE like this is the question. I don't know. The card's so good, you might just run it anyway. Even if it only killed a 3-3 three, three on turn 3, it's still uh, a nice little swing on board. So, high output cards like this that do very powerful things tend to find their way into decks, even if they're not totally perfect uh, for the game plan. As far as I'm concerned, if you're committing to Soul Fragments, if that's a part of your deck package, how are you not going to run this card? Even if it's not 100% synergistic with a game plan, it just seems too good to give up. So now let's head back over to Warlock, and this is Warlock's class-specific uh, shuffle card. It's School Spirits, three mana, deal two damage to all minions, and of course shuffle two soul fragments into your deck. So we've got here another early game AoE card. This time it's not as much of a payoff. It's more of a setup. And we have seen, uh, basically this is Volcanic Potion for Mage back in the day. It's exactly the same. We've seen a few other two damage breakpoint AoEs. We know that Consecrations and Holy Novas still do work in Hearthstone today. And I think School Spirits is completely fine in that regard. It doesn't feel quite as efficient as some of the other tools because it is hurting your own board and Warlock is a class that tends to have things on board. But if you're shifting this more in a control game plan, you're playing it with things like Moarg Artificer, this is kind of like a flame strike in a can, right? Uh, you kill your Moarg, unfortunately, but you wipe much bigger things. And I think Warlock in control environments loves running Moarg already. So it's a natural fit. And if you are playing a slower, more control style, as I think a Soul Fragment Warlock would want to do, then of course you have Soul Fragments to heal you back up off your school spirits here. So this does feel like another pretty good uh, shuffle setup card and it's very befitting of Warlock, much like Marrow Slicer is quite befitting of Demon Hunter. So um, absolutely, this one makes sense. If Soul Fragments were to be played in like more of a zoo style Warlock deck, where you're trying to get early minion pressure, it'd be hard because I don't think School Spirits fits very well into that game plan. You don't want to be damaging your own stuff as an aggressive Warlock. So it does perhaps limit or force Warlock in a specific direction for Soul Fragments. Well, I don't think Demon Hunter does quite as much. It could play a little bit later and still play aggressive, um, that's probably fine, and uh, School Spirit still looks totally okay. So moving on here to the Shadow Light Scholar payoff card for Warlock. It's a 3-mana three 3-4 three, Battle Cry. Destroy a Soul Fragment in your deck to deal 3 damage. And uh, this looks like a really cool 
mid-game swing card way better than your scale riders or your SI7 agents of the world from both the stat line and damage standpoint. And it can go face as well, which is really cool. So uh, this reminds me a lot of the uh, weaponized wasp, I guess, the warlock lackey, or excuse me, the shaman lackey synergy card, 3-3, three, three, deal three, but it's even better than that as well. So as long as you have a soul fragment in your deck, this card's just crazy strong on turn three. And I think the upside here is it's actually not too bad later in the game as well, because it can go face. It could be a lethal blow setup. It could still help you chip down a minion in the mid to late game while developing a medium sized body on board. So Shadow Light Scholar looks perfect. And you know, this could point towards more of a zoo game plan where you're really happy to win the early board off of Shadow Light Scholar. The question is, um, can you consistently hit Soul Fragments enough? This isn't disastrous to play without the Soul Fragment, but it's definitely way better if you have it there. So uh, would this make its way into a control deck? I think it can still because it has that removal utility through its damage. So it'd probably be fine to put in a slower deck. Certainly would make sense in a faster deck. Warlock seems restricted to slower decks for soul fragments. Uh, so this isn't quite as perfect as you might hope in that regard, just being a cheaper minion. But uh, nonetheless, still seems totally fine. All right, next up here is the Void Drinker. Five mana, four, five demon with taunt and battle cry destroy a soul fragment in your deck to gain plus three, plus three. So that means it's a seven, eight minion. Basically that earth elemental stat line which is pretty nice. And you know, even if you don't have the soul fragment, once again, probably not disastrous to play a five minute four or five taunt. You're not excited, but we've seen shield of Galakron feel okay on board in many instances. And this has that additional upside. Of course, with a card like this though, the problem is always things like Zephyrus shadow or deaths of the world remove this pretty darn efficiently. So big minions being played earlier in the game aren't quite as powerful as they used to be but it's still just a body that has to be worked through in a lot of cases, and some decks won't have that. And pushing through a 7-8 taunt in the mid game will be disastrous for a lot of different aggro decks who don't have access to those tools, meaning Void Drinker seems like a really nice mid game defensive tool. Would be happy to run this in any kind of control warlock deck that's running soul fragments. And I think the cool thing too is, is like this is a great card for once you've started to stabilize and turn the corner a little bit, Big threats like this help you end games sooner because it's a high damage output. Stick one of these on board, start whacking your opponent for seven, and you're going to give them less time to find outs, to find those kill commands, to magically secure a lethal. So it's nice with cards like Void Drinker to know that that counter pressure exists in a big way with this one. When you're not really committing that much mana to it, you can still play other things with it and start pushing to end the game. So it does seem like a great tool for a slower Warlock deck. And arguably you could even put this as like the mid to, to top end in a zoo deck as well. Just curve into this giant seven, eight as the final threat on board that breaks your opponent's back. So don't sleep on it in that direction either. And then finally here we have the, uh, the big payoff card for soul fragments, uh, the dual class legendary card, soul Sociologist militia. It's a seven mana five five and battle cry for each soul fragment in your deck. Summon a three three soul with rush. Now, really important distinction here. Sociologist militia does not destroy soul fragments. Every other card we've talked about, you lose one of your soul fragments. So you lose some of that healing from the payoff card. Now, of course, uh, every shuffle card shuffles two. The payoff cards only destroy one. So you still have this net gain of soul fragments happening throughout the game, which means you're going to have some left by the time you get to turn seven for Militia. And it means you're also going to have some healing left in the deck as well. But she's, you know, an expert. She's like the professor. She's not going to destroy the soul fragments. She's just going to utilize them by turning them into minions on board. And this one's really hard to figure out how big the payoff here is because we haven't played this. It's It's almost impossible to envision or imagine how many soul fragments you're likely to have my guess is with all the shuffle mechanics and the occasional destruction you're probably going to shuffle something like six to eight soul fragments by the time you naturally want to play sociologist and you might destroy two to three by that point so you're probably looking at something like four to six soul fragments naturally on turn seven Maybe that's a little bit liberal of an estimate, perhaps more like three to five soul fragments. But even in that case, that's still, you know, four to four to six pretty reasonably sized bodies on turn seven, which is still, I think, early enough for these kinds of plays to make a big significant impact. 
And um, they do have rush, so sometimes that's going to be great to flip a board back in your favor and kill a couple things of your opponents and leave behind a 5-5 five, five and a couple 3-3s. Three, Other times you may not even need to trade. You may be playing from ahead, particularly in Demon Hunter, and this is just a big dump of stats on board where you get a 5-5 five, five and a bunch of 3-3s. Three, and it, I do like that the health breakpoints are staggered a little bit, so you know a Hellfire doesn't totally wipe everything. You still have the Militia to deal with and a 5-2 left behind. I think that's important for cards like this to make sure that uh, it's not super easily answered. There's always twisting nethers and such, but that's a big removal commitment for a single payoff card here. So I like that this has that instant reactivity with Rush. So if you're playing it from behind, it's totally okay. You're probably going to trade in a few 3 threes and be left with a minion or two, and a 5-5 five is not bad as a consolation prize. And then other times it's just going to be that big board dump where your opponent has suddenly got to answer it and figure it out. Even if you don't utilize the Rush, it's still... Uh, and mini decks going to be that winning push that uh, just can't be answered. So it does feel like a really nice payoff card. And if it doesn't work, you've left those soul fragments in your deck. So you still have those other payoff cards to activate or just lots of healing to buy you time. So all in all, to kind of sum up this soul fragment package here on this card, it's really hard to review these because it's kind of an all or nothing. It's one of those things where it's like, this may not work. It might just be too awkward. Maybe the cards uh, don't pan out just because, you know, it's too hard to get the soul fragments there in time and the payoff cards always fail. So the deck consistency is terrible. Or maybe the archetype just doesn't fit nicely into a meta. You have to play it the specific way and the meta doesn't uh, line up right there. Or the two damage break points of, of school spirits just doesn't make sense because Demon Hunter now plays three health minions. You never really know what's going to happen in a future meta. So it's it's like it's either going to work or it's going to fail. So it's like every card's either four stars or every card is either two stars <laughs> and it's hard to assess them independently. Maybe you can a little bit across classes at least. I think Warlock is probably a class that likes Soul Fragments a little better just because Demon Hunter seems like they have such a refined game plan. But then again, the Demon Hunter payoff cards seem way stronger. So maybe Demon Hunter can afford to run Soul Fragment packages just because the cards are nuts. Like, five attack is crazy strong. So just bear with me as we review these. I think it's important to consider who knows what's going to happen here. But I'm going to do my best when it comes to star ratings. All right, so it's not all Soul Fragments, of course. We've also got here Devout Pupil, revealed by my bro Dexter. And it's a really cool dual class Paladin Priest card. Uh, might be slipping under the radar a little bit because I think this card's actually really strong. It's a six mana four five with divine shield and taunt. So uh, at its base level, it's actually just a Hearthstone card. <laughs> it's the Sunwalker for the classic. That's a card that actually popped into some decks here and there occasionally. Something we still see a lot off Power of Creation, of course. Uh, but this one gets cheaper for every spell you've cast on friendly characters this game. Uh, so any sort of buff card, any sort of heal card in Priest, like Renews on Minions, uh, naturally start discounting this. And let me tell you, since it starts at 6 mana, it doesn't take too many discounts to make this card really interesting. It, like, 4 mana, this is a nuts card. At, like, 3 or less, it's bonkers. And I don't think it's going to be that hard to get it to 0. There are Librem of Wisdoms that are incredibly cheap to cycle and play. Uh, you can play multiple Librams of Wisdom in a single turn, just trading in a couple minions. You could get this guy to zero mana in no time in a Librum deck. Uh, Priest has those Sethic Veilweaver turns where they go crazy. You've got, like, um, Power Word Shields. You can just start spamming those, get this to zero mana in no time. So I absolutely think this is going to be played often as a one, two mana, big body in the mid-game, like turn three, turn four, quite consistently and then it's 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 very often going to be zero mana off the top anytime you draw it later as this big dump of stats and defensiveness so i think it's going to be great for both priest and paladin maybe a little bit better in paladin because you're going to be able to buff it so nicely with divine shield like all these buffs naturally love divine shields because it multiplies the stats impact because your opponent has to deal with the stats twice essentially thanks to the divine shield so I, this could be like the sleeper corridor creeper card of the set. I, it seems so good to me, and I don't think it's going to be hard to get cheap, and I don't even think you have to get it that much cheaper to make it a relevant body on board. So both of these classes uh, can probably use this successfully, particularly Paladin seems just 
crazy ready to take advantage of this card in a Librem slash buff support deck. So keep an eye on this one. I think it's very, very good. Instructor Fireheart is a four-star card. Spirit Jailer Spirit Jailer is a four-star card. Soul Shear is a three-star card. Marrow Slicer is a four-star card. Shard Shatter Mystic is a four-star card. Soul Shard Lapidary is a four-star card. School Spirits is a three-star card. Shadow Light Scholar is a four-star card. Void Drinker is a three-star card. Sociologist Militia is a four-star card. Devout Pupil is a five-star card? All right, that wraps it up for this review. I, I kind of decided to say Soul Fragments are going to work and maybe Warlocks are a little bit worse, which I think is probably the opposite of what I said when I was talking about the cards. Uh, but just thinking about it, some of the Warlock cards seemed a little bit more susceptible or awkward from a breakpoint uh, standpoint. So I gave a couple of those threes, gave a couple of them fours. I think the Demon Hunter stuff looks pretty juicy, even despite how good Demon Hunter cards are in general. So I think those are going to get played. That said, pretty good chance the whole thing backfires and the soul fragments just don't feel good and the consistency is weak and they're all two-star cards. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Certainly I'm going to test these out ASAP and uh, we'll find out sooner rather than later. But some of those payoff cards are pretty strong. That said, what do you guys think? Do you think the power level is there? Do you think the consistency is there? Uh, are you going to draw your soul fragments too soon? Are you going to have to cut good card draw to make it all work? Uh, share those thoughts in the comments below, of course. Always love hearing your takes. Lots of good ones down there, uh, particularly this last week. So uh, thanks, as always, for watching, and uh, thanks for subscribing. I know that you subscribed. You did it. I saw it, and I love you for it. Thank you. And uh, until next time, game on.